I think when we look at demand generation, as I mentioned, there's so many different uh, definitions out there. Uh, I think people, I, I worked with one client who I still keep in touch with, and she started to say, well, my group's only responsible for the middle of the funnel. There was no vision above, there was no vision below. So she was creating all this content and literally was getting very frustrated because she had no idea what was working. And she said, but we're focused on nurture demand generation. And so even those terms like nurturing and lead gen and, and what does all that mean? So I think it's really important that we define demand generation, which is gonna serve as the baseline and the context for this discussion today. First and foremost, demand generation is a perpetual process. So when you think about the way buyers buy, think about what we do in our consumer lives. The example I like to use, and I wrote a blog about it last week, is when I went searching for a car. So I'll give you the punchline, when you're in Colorado, you have to at least own one Subaru. That's kind of a rule. So I did end up with a Subaru, but even though my neighbor is the fleet manager for the largest Subaru dealer in the United States, I first went to where to research a car. Where do we all go to research something? The internet, Google. So I went to Google and all I did was type in top all-wheel drive vehicles. I've got four kids, I want our family to be safe when we drive in the snow and in the ice and some of the weather we get in Colorado, so that's what I did. I didn't just go there and then download a brochure and then say, okay, I'm gonna buy. I was in this perpetual buying process. So if we do that in our consumer lives, why would we think for a minute when we all of a sudden get into our work lives that it's any different? So we as marketers have to think about buyers when they're in a buying pattern are perpetually seeking information and consuming content. And if we can't perpetually design something that gives that to them, we are failing our buyers. We also wanna make sure that we optimize it to engage, nurture, and convert. And we'll dive deeper into that here in a little bit. Those are more macro stages of a buying process, engagement, nurture, and convert. Then what we also want to do is educate and qualify. I think one of the mistakes marketers make is when we do our programs, when we launch our demand generation initiatives, we think about all about qualified leads. But if I can educate you as a buyer on how to think about your problems, on solutions to your problems, not necessarily my products or services, but a different way to think and give you some education, there's a very good chance that as I, weed, as I go through and start to weed out other vendors, you're gonna be on that short list because you're the one as a vendor who helped me think differently about our problem. We just closed a deal with a uh, pretty large managed services organization. And uh, we actually just closed it yesterday and in talking to them about the sales process, she said, you know, it was really interesting that we came in with this really defined view of what we needed. She said, but you helped expand our horizons and now we've kind of shifted our priorities and we want to build perpetual demand in our organization. So that's what we need to do. We need to educate and qualify. And then lastly, it's about driving revenue and maximizing customer lifetime value. So if you think about this, driving revenue, these are not words that you would have ever seen at a marketing conference 15 years ago. Driving pipeline. I had one CMO say to me recently, I don't want to sign up for a number, it scares the crap out of me. But that's where we are as marketers. Our CEOs are pushing us to say, what do you, I've given you $4 million, what have you returned back to the organization? So this is how we define demand generation. So within that, there's a lot of challenges. And I could probably have put today's marketing and sales challenges. So we do a study at Annuitus. I know Joe and his team with Marketing Profs do a study as well. And I think hopefully you'll be able to relate to some of these challenges. And I'd be curious as well if you have other challenges that I wasn't able to uh, define up here. I'd love to hear what those are as well. First and foremost, most companies, unfortunately, are not successful with demand generation. So this comes from our 2014 study that we did at Annuitus. We're actually in the process of releasing our 2015 study, which will come out <clears throat> either the end of this month or early October. But we asked the question, how successful are you with your demand generation initiatives? And only 2.8% said we're highly effective. That's an anemic number. And so part, there's, there's a lot of different reasons for this. There's skill set issue, there's a measurement issue, 
uh, when you look at some of the studies right now that 52% of CMOs still can't even quantify short-term ROI on any of their demand generation initiatives. So I'm not saying that only 3% of organizations are really stellar. I think there's this struggle of what does success look like? Does anybody struggle with that in the room on ROI and what does success look like? The other interesting thing, and we don't get into it here, is when we started to look at and in this study ask what your most, what your goals are for demand gen, the measurements didn't measure their goals. So a lot of companies have these goals about driving higher quality leads, but when we started to say what are your top measurements, it was website visits, clicks, opens. That doesn't tell me anything other than top line engagement. So we have to do a better job at aligning our measurement with our goals. Thank you.